Hey Fly Tires, Darren here. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be doing a variation of Charlie Craven's Charlie Boy. And uh, this one's a tiny bit more complex than his original. We've got uh, an added indicator and a wing as well as a little more complex leg system on there. But as far as complexity of flies, this one is fairly straightforward and easy to tie. Uh, might take you a little bit of time just to get the hang of it, but once you got that down, it's quite simple. So this is a nice uh, uh, hopper pattern for the summer and fall. It's a very high floating fly and it will support a dropper without any issues. It's nice and durable and it's not going to become waterlogged very easily and it's got these great little silicone twitchy legs that are going to give you some action. I like to tie this in a number of different colors like yellows, browns, tans, olives, or you can try something different like a hot pink or a red just to kind of switch it up a little bit. All right, so don't forget to leave a comment below and I'll get you entered into the next draw. Let's have a look at the material list and get started. Let's get a fresh hook in the vise. So just got in these new hooks. These are the Firehole 718 and it's kind of an all-purpose curved shank. I like this for stoneflies and hoppers. It's a really nice uh, sturdy hook. It's got a bit of a heavier wire on there. And we're going to be tying in a size 6 here today. So for thread, we're going to be using a rusty brown UTC 6 aught, and you probably don't want to go any smaller than that, just because you might uh, cut right through your uh, foam if you've got a smaller diameter thread. So the 140 is what we're going to stick with today, and I mean, depending on what color of uh, fly you're tying, you might want to adjust the color of thread you're using. So I've just went ahead and put a base layer of thread on here and this is going to be used to kind of help adhere our body. We're going to take a waste piece of foam. This is probably like a three millimeter by two millimeter piece strip of foam and we'll tie that kind of from the front to the bottom leaving room for uh, forming our head and the back of the fly and just kind of double that over and trim off the front of that and this will add a touch of buoyancy to the fly as well and we're just going to leave our thread hanging just near the point of the hook and then we're going to cut a piece of foam here so what I do is I want to measure out my foam and for this size of fly I'm going to be using about a centimeter width, so I'll just line that, line that up with a one centimeter, and I'll do that on the bottom as well. And I find it really helps if you've got a nice straight edge and a sharp blade, and you're going to get some nice uniform pieces. And we are going to be folding this over, so you want to make sure that the foam is uniform in length. And I'll normally cut up a bunch of these ahead of time in various different colors. I've got some different tans, browns, and oranges that I'm going to be using for hoppers quite a bit. Alright, so we're going to grab a piece of foam here. And I'm going to be using a tan, kind of an olive -y tan for this one. And you just want to uh, give yourself a little bit of room to work with and kind of line that up right in the center and poke it through. Then we'll take the hook out of the vise and we're just going to wrap that foam up underneath the hook just past the vise jaws there. And we'll pull the long end of that forward and then we're just going to kind of center that on the eye of the hook and we want to put a little bit of pressure on that 
kind of pull that a little bit and you can kind of see how the eye of the hook kind of pokes through and we're going to just take our scissors and just kind of score that foam until we've got a bit of a hole enough to poke the hook eye through. There we go. So next we want to start forming the body and uh, just get that stuck together. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a little bit of super glue and we're going to start adding this to the foam and we're going to stick a little bit on the backbone of foam on the uh, back end and along the sides and this is going to help kind of uh, stick everything together and you just want to make sure that you distribute that glue evenly over that surface just to make sure that it, uh, when we fold over the foam that everything's going to be stuck together and use a uh, brush on glue or if you've just got the a tube of glue you can use a toothpick just to help distribute that all right so we're going to start up near the front we just want to make sure that we match that up and we'll just use our thumb and forefinger just to kind of keep that pinched closed and we'll kind of work our way back when we get to the very back of the fly we want the foam to kind of um, taper up a little bit. This will help give us a nice uh, shape to the body of this fly. And then we'll just go ahead and trim off this back piece here and we'll use that on the next part of a fly. We're not going to be using it for this fly but we'll put it aside and use it for another fly that we tie. And we just want to make sure that that's all squeezed together. Then we're going to start creating the body segments. So we'll just um, loop over our thread. And we just want to use a few thread wraps and then slowly add some tension. You don't want to add too much tension at once. And then we'll cross over. We'll create our second segment. You just want to try and uh, Keep it smooth on the bottom if possible. If it folds up on top a little bit, that's okay. So the goal here is to create uh, four different sections. So you just kind of go a little forward each time and then add a few thread wraps and then diagonal up and add a few more thread wraps. And then you get this nice segmented body. And we'll go back to the uh, second thread wrap set there. You can kind of see how that uh, goes forward. We're going to be covering this up so it doesn't matter too much what it looks like on top. I'm more concerned how it looks on the bottom. So here we're going to take a razor blade and we're just going to kind of hold that foam in place. We just want to go straight back and just uh, create a little bit of a taper on that. So as you can see, we've got a bit of a shovel in the back. So we just want to take our razor or your scissors and come in and kind of fix that. Just be careful here. Again, adult supervision might be required or uh, at least a responsible adult. It's like it's a nice tapered uh, back section on there. This uh, blade isn't the sharpest. You probably want to use a fresh one when you're working with foam. And again at the front you just want to kind of even up those uh, sides of the head here with uh, either your scissors or use the blade just to kind of straighten those out. And again just be careful with the razor and if it's not exactly how you want it. You can go back and fix it up. You just want those flattened a little bit just so that they give you a bit nicer profile. All right. So next we're going to get a couple sets of legs ready. So I like using these bass skirts and we'll clip off two pieces. And what I like to do is just do an overhand loop in the 
with both legs together and we'll pull those tight and those create a nice little knotted leg similar to what you would do with a pheasant tail. So we'll go ahead and get two of those ready for the fly and then we'll just snip off the back ends there. Alright, so we've got our thread resting at the second segment on the back and we'll bring our legs in. And for this I just like to kind of find a point where you can use as a reference. So for me I kind of use the middle of the back section and that's where I'll put the knot. We'll use a couple thread wraps just to put that in place. And that kind of gives me a reference for where I'm going to place the second set on the other side. So somewhere around the midpoint there. You just want to kind of make sure that when it rests it uh, sits nicely. And we'll give that a couple wraps at thread. Just want to make sure you don't bind down the front legs. These can be a little tricky. Then we'll take all four of the legs facing forward. And we'll just kind of pull those and we'll wrap the thread on top of the foam and give a few wraps here just to secure those front legs in place. And if you need to adjust them, now's the best time before they get locked into position. It'll be a lot harder to change the position of these later on. All right, we're going to create a foam wing. So I take the piece that I cut off of the body earlier. This is a different color. And we're just going to taper this out and give it a rounded edge. And what I like to do is just uh, cut up one side and then flip it over and cut the other side. Uh, for me, this is gives me a little bit more consistency. If you've got uh, good scissor skills, you can probably do that without having to switch sides. You just want a nice rounded wing, something you'd expect for a stonefly or a hopper. All right, and we'll go ahead and bring that wing in and we'll just tie it in with a touch of overhang right at the uh, first section of thread and then we'll tip the wing back and I like to tie this down at the back at the second section where the legs are first tied in here as well. You just want to be careful that you don't tie down any of your legs as you tie in this wing section. Just a few wraps of thread is all you need. And just make sure it's centered on your fly. And then we'll take a little bit of our super glue and we'll just add a couple dabs along the back. And that's going to cover up all those extra thread wraps that we had. And we'll just push that down for a couple seconds. And I like to give that a bit of an upturn at the end. And that's just. Uh, my personal preference, <laughs> but I like the way that that looks. All right, so we're going to grab a little bit of elk hair for a wing on top of this fly. We'll take a generous stack here and we'll clip that at the base. And we're just going to take a second to clean that up. So I like to uh, pull out anything that's really short, pull out any fibers that you can pull your fingers through, and then I just Flip my scissors through there just to kind of pull out some of that fuzz. It can be a little bit tricky to get sometimes. Then we'll grab it by the base and then we're going to uh, put that into our hair stacker by the tips. And we'll give that a few taps just to make sure all the hairs get aligned in our stacker. Once you got that, we'll twist those out a little bit and there you go you've got a nice stack of elk hair all right let's take our thread up to the first segment here make sure you don't catch any of your legs pull those legs forward out of the way and we're going to take our elk hair we'll kind of measure that almost to the back of that foam wing and when you got it in place, you just want to make sure you give it a 
loose wrap or two to make sure everything's uh, out of the way there so you don't bind down your legs and then get a little bit tighter with each wrap and then we're going to kind of separate the butt ends from the from the tips and we'll come in with our scissors and we'll trim those away You want to make sure you don't cut any of the back wing and you don't want to be cutting off the uh, legs or anything like that on the fly. And it doesn't hurt if you put a couple extra wraps of thread and it can go through the uh, cut ends of that hair as well. All right, we probably should have cut these legs shorter a little bit earlier, but uh, we'll go ahead and do that right now. And you just kind of eyeball that. I pull everything forward at once and cut it all the same length. And same for the back legs, pull everything back. You don't want to stretch it, just kind of pull it back. And you can trim everything in one cut. And for these back legs, you don't need the two. So we'll just uh, leave the two at the body and then trim that down to one actual leg. There we go. And so one more thing that I'm going to add to this is uh, another section for the wing. This would be what I consider optional, uh, but I'm going to be using this somewhat as a strike indicator. So you probably want to use a bright color that you can see because this isn't really going to be visible for the fish. This is more for the angler. So I'm going to use a bright orange on this one. You can also use white or chartreuse. And we'll just trim up the front. We've got that wrapped in just on top of the wing. And we'll cut that down a little bit just so that it sits on top of that elk hair wing. Now we'll grab our whip finisher, whip finish tool, and we'll give that a whip finish. And again, we just want to make sure we don't bind down any of those legs while we're putting the whip finish on. And we'll trim that thread. We're going to add a little bit of durability to the fly and we're going to do that by taking a little bit of uh, bone dry or a little bit of head cement or resin and we're just going to be coating those thread wraps on at least the bottom, the first two sections there. Those are the heaviest and they're not fortified with anything else. So we'll give those a zap with the UV light. And the last thing on the list here that we have to do is just add a, a little bit of an eye there. So we just take a Sharpie just want to kind of stick that right in the middle, give a nice big black eye to the fly. And that's it for the Charlie Boy variant. Now this one's a little bit more involved in the original, um, but uh, I do like this variation and it's a really high floating fly. I think you'll really enjoy putting a dropper off the back of this. Hey Fly Tires, thanks for stopping by and checking out my fly tying videos. If you enjoyed the video and want to show your support, hit the thumbs up and share it to your social networks. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel and if you do, be sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications on my latest fly patterns, tips and reviews. If you have a question or comment, leave a message below. You'll also be entered into the next draw for some of the flies I tie and a few stickers. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.